Welcome back to the Dales. It's a bit cloudy, but hopefully it's not going to rain. Uh, I've been promising to do my mate's paddock here for him, so... <laughs> it's an absolute bog. <laughs> uh, but I found Luca Coyne straight away. 2004, 20 pence. <laughs> Spendies! <laughs> Coin ball, about nine inches, very, very, very small signal. And uh, no numbers. So, just, what are you? Ha <laughs> ha here we go. Oh, oh, gotta be a button. Got to be a button, and it is a button. There you go. Bronze button. Yes. Here's one for the mystery buffs. Bronze brass hinges here. Uh, seem to be something in that end. Not sure what. And the, the screw still works. Look. And I can't see anything written on it. But there you go. <laughs> well, they've uh, been picnicking here. There's a fork. All it could manage was a 61. I think that size, look. It's got to be a uh, cupra nickel. Yes, unfortunately this paddock is the... <laughs> it's a tip, a dump for that farmhouse there. It's full of iron and grot. Uh, one interesting thing here, 18... Uh, Young-headed Elizabeth halfpenny. Uh, 1893 and it's got a dint in it somebody's been firing at it look dint oh another coin 1983 it's one of the large 50 pence pieces they're not in circulation now huh. big mound here um, in the, well, fairly substantial mound, but uh, I think it's just tipped. However, there's a interesting piece of lead look with uh, two iron uh, strips coming out of there. Hmm. Little path coming from over here and going down there through the field. I knew about that. What I didn't know about was that it split there and it come across here and it went through that hedge there and I've just found a 1891 uh, Victorian half penny on the path uh, it's gonna fall apart before I get home right I think that's the top of a hurricane lamp because on the top and it had uh, at least one screw if not three screws keep it in position Hey, big signal, 94 each way, whoop. <laughs> I shall have a wander over there in a minute. Uh, iron buckle. But, oh, disgusting. And we all know, I don't do iron. <laughs> now, that's more like it. A couple of feet away, nice bronze webbing buckle. Uh, still slides quite nicely. Huh. In good nick. Probably got a number on there. I'll clean it up when I get home. Webbing buckle. Corners like this, where, where people have got to go around. They come from here and they go around, or they come up here. Congregates people and they drop stuff. And um, guess what? <laughs> Favourite coin ball. Right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oops, it is it. Oh, oh. Uh, it's a ring. Uh, I think. Make sure there's nothing else there. 
Yes, nice 91 in two directions. Yes, I think it's a ring. Look. I'll have a closer look when we clean it up. Now, I think that's part of a buckle. Fancy buckle. One thinks it goes that way, but I'm not too sure. That's, that could go through a hole and that could go through a belt as well. I think that's part of a buckle. What do you reckon, fellas? It's all in one piece. There doesn't seem to be anything else. Oh, a really fresh wind blowing now. A pure spoon in nice condition. Yeah, nice one. That's yeah, another coin. 1910, half penny. Well, part of a pewter button. <laughs> Not even half. Big button, that. Hey, another bronze button. Huh. You know, this field, there's, there's all sorts of stuff here. No silver yet. <laughs> But well, the other side of that hedge there, footpath, absolutely barren, useless. Ain't it weird? George 5, 1917, half penny. Oh, the hard one today, I'm a bit cream crackered. Coin ball. Oops, oop, ooh. Bear with me. Nah, nothing on it. It's, um, let's just call it a George 3F. Yeah? About 1770s. Oh, I like it when you take the plug out. And there it is. Now, is it a coin? I think so. <laughs> Almost a coin ball. Oh, George 5. George 5, half penny. Eh, yeah, one more. Uh -huh. Now, this is when detecting can be a cruel mistress or a... <laughs> a really good friend. I've got a 95 in both directions with this. That's quite some signal. Oh, my goodness. Hopefully you're a great big bronze coin. Yes indeed, a cartwheel, cartwheel penny. Nice one. I won't clean it here. Uh, 1797 George Third cartwheel penny. 95 in both directions. What a belter! <laughs> see the see the cartwheel around the outside. Look that rim. Right, another of those worn copper. Hey, I got a better signal on this one on 12 uh, kilohertz than I did on 18. Very thin. A possibility of William 3 here. It, it just feels it somehow. Where's all the other fields? They're all got their cows in them and their oh, big holes full of water and squelching. There's the odd bit of hills like this. Pardon the wind noise. Uh, so it's not that thick. So I reckon, well, it's that over there. And there you go. Thimble. Worth a look around here now. Oh, nice substantial button. Needs cleaning. Definitely been on this little hillside. Hey, um, the tap. Turning mechanism of a, of a tap. Probably out of a beer keg. Oh, I'm working hard, but I'm not finding silver. 
half a horseshoe. Whoa. Come on, bring me a bit of luck. Still got nails in luck. And still they keep coming. Nice buckle. Bronze buckle. I like my buckles. I'm quite a few miles from home here, so I'm going to work this till I drop. <laughs> Let's hope it's not figuratively. Oh, a little bronze boss. Yeah, decoration off something. Oh, that got me going. I thought it was hammered. Um, it's very interesting. It says Robert Lund. Can't get the rest. His half penny in Skipton. Hey, wow, that's going some. That's a long way away from here, is Skipton. Oh dear, I thought it were hammered. <laughs> Hey, still, that's a beautiful find. That's a belter. I'll get get some details when we get back. Oh, my compulsory iron ring. <laughs> it's a bit late. Hey, things are going to get good now. Okay, I've come across onto the footpath where I found all that silver. In case I missed something, and well, I missed a, <laughs> I missed a threepenny bit. 1937 thrift plant <coughs> George Six oh I'm dying <coughs> cough cough sound like the mask <coughs> a 94 coin ball oh what we got it's probably a, a modern 2p they come in at 94 but we'll see Yeah, big coin ball. <laughs> Oops, here we go, here we go. Do we, do we, do we? Maybe not. Oh. Make sure I've still got it there. Eh? <laughs> yep. Still in there. Oh, there he is. And there it is, 2p. 94 each way is usually a two pence. A modern Queen Lizzie two pence. Yep. Oh, walking home. <sighs> Coin ball. <laughs> oh, you gotta keep. I'm gonna work this till I drop, I tell you. And then I'm gonna go get some fish and chips from the chippy. Oh, I like the feel of that. Yes, indeed. Oh, that looks like a George 3. Clean them up when we get home. <laughs> now, what gives you 98 in both directions? It's the petrol cap of an old Austin car. <laughs> the size of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well that's going to be my last find of the hunt because that's the gate I'm going out of <laughs> um, 19 what's that who are you there's a birth so that's um, 1962 isn't it Half penny, ship half penny. Right, that's it. See you at the roundup. Sun's going down and I'm going home. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the roundup. Oh, that was one marathon of a hunt and I got a load of goodies. Everyone's got a story to tell, but let's start with the junk, eh? Uh, as usual, it got lead because I'm working in uh, New Land. Oops, that's heavy. A couple of little iron 
strips coming out the top of there and it goes all the way through. Don't know what it's for. Just lead, lead, lead. Uh, go over here. This, this screwed into something, look. And it, it was sort of a, a nozzle. Um, no idea what that is. None at all. Here. Copper strap. Or a bronze, I'm not sure. But uh, definitely used to hold something down. But nothing written on it. Little screwing nozzle thingy. Don't know what you are. <laughs> 12 bar. Cartridge. Oh, rather a posh one. Look, it's, uh, it's all gilded. Uh, now, L Y A L V A L. That's Veil. Lyle Veil. Never heard of it. Oh, that's a 12 down there. Look. Well, ball. Curious. Posh. <laughs> uh, let's go to this. This is out of a tap, isn't it? You just turn it. Uh, probably a little beer keg tap. Maybe not. Could be a gas tap. Then this. Well. Hinges there, that goes up and down. I think it's a, not sure actually. <laughs> Something either goes in there. I'm not sure what that did. If anybody's any ideas, where to go? Now, I thought this was off one of those rulers. Um, I'm not sure it's laminated look. It's got three three skins of copper and two of wood in between. And presumably swivels around that point. <laughs> oh my goodness, that large coil will pick up really tiny things. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, now, pewter, presume, four candle, I'm not sure, it's really splitting up, whereas the spoon, pewter spoon, very nice condition lock, very nice indeed, a couple of little chips, that's probably me, but, um, like it when they're turning up, you're, you're in all this stuff. Now, this is a this is a bronze boss for something. Um, looks uh, like a washer or, or holding something down on a on a cart. Old look, bronzy, bronzy, beautiful patina. Going to buttons. Whoa. <laughs> Funny, really, really, really substantial, but got at. There's a lot of iron in that, I'm sure. And then this one, well, loads of it missing. Bronze button. Uh, it's got the name on the inside there, but it's probably from Birmingham. And another one. Oh, still got a bit of... A bit of original thread look. That's quite substantial. But it's coarse and rough look. That that's that's very old thread, isn't it? Well, but it went. It went. Wall through. Now <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? 
that had me going. It's uh, I thought it was a buckle, but it's it's a bottle cap opener, and there's probably a handle on this end, and you put it you put it down onto the cap and lifted it up, Dum. and that spike stuck in the cap. Yes, you're a bottle opener, aren't you? Whoa! <laughs> One thing about these things is, they try to get lost again. Webbing buckle, nice one. World War Two, presumably. A um, lot of soldiers are sort of coming home, bringing their gear with them, and but still in good nick. Here we go. Nice buckle. That, the bit of land that this came out of is the same one that that uh, 1666 coin came out of. And it was very, it was on the top of the hill and very shallow soil and very gravelly. Um, so that it, it wasn't as acid as normal, so the iron stayed good. As did this, which came from fairly near to that. That's one gorgeous thimble in extremely good condition extremely good unbelievable uh, ring ring next <laughs> um, well, it's very hard to get focused on rings got to give it something to look at there we go it's a brass ring I'm sure I don't think that's cheap gold I think it's brass No design, but definitely a ring. Would have looked nice when it were new. Let's go on to coins. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen coins. Not bad. Ranging from a two pence, nineteen eighty, a two thousand and four, twenty pence. 1983, one of the old 50p's. I uh, can't spend them anymore. They do the same shape, but it's much smaller. It's, it's about a half of the size. A 1937 thrift, threepenny bit. That's the way you tell the George VI. Elizabeth has got a portcullis there. Now, half pennies, 1962, Elizabeth II, 1923, George V, 1919, 1917, old George V, back on Victoria, 1892, and an 1891. This one, look, had a bump. Now, I don't know if that's an egg on pellet, but they used to use money for target practice. Um, <laughs> long time since I've had one, but there you go. And then coppers, one, two, three, four, five copper coins. The old one ounce cartwheel penny. Um, I'll try and get this right, but his, you can see his eye and his nose there. Um, most of the rest has gone. It's got that rim round the edge. Huge coins. One ounce, pure copper. Um, and th that's why they call them cartwheels, because of that. Now, let's get this right way around. That's his head. So, oh, there's the trident of Britannia. She's in there under that green. And down the bottom here, I'll try to get it for you. If you can read across, it goes one, seven, Nine, seven. Right in the bottom there, lot. One, seven, nine, seven. Seventeen ninety-seven. George the Third cartwheel penny, and they're heavy. Blum, blum, blum. <laughs> These are the they're the size of um, eighteen or six George Third, but they're not. They're not. 
something went wrong when they did these in the old days. That their copper wasn't pure at all because some of it resisted luck and some of it just got worn away. Um, very impure copper. Very impure. So it means I can't even get a date on those, but they're not 1806. I think the William, William Thirds, which would put him about 1700. But to go really back, piece de resistance is this token. Absolute little belter. Robert Lund, um, his half penny. Lund spelt L V N D. C B tells me uh, that was short for London, so his name could have been Robert London. But we do have Robert Lunds in this district still. And there is a 1666 up there, there's the date. And on the other side, we have got, if I get this right way up, um, oh, that side says Robert Lund, there's Lund, there it is, look, LVND, Lund, grocer, he was a grocer, and I think that was his coat of arms, I'm not sure. That there. And he lived in, there's in, Skipton. <laughs> Skipton, Yorkshire. Gateway to the Dales. <laughs> and in 1666, he was allowed to make his own money by Charles II. And that is his half penny. So there we go, it was a terrific uh, long hunt, tiring hunt. I am still cream crackered. <laughs> but I'm glad you could join me. Uh, until I see you next time, because I'm not going out today. <laughs> That's all I can do to sit here and drink me beer. <laughs> you take care, we'll see you again. Bye.